to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, join us for a story about the Ray Organ and its new home in the Fort Wallace Museum. And join us for a story about Caldwell, where you will find talking tombstones. Next, learn about Sage, and we'll end with a look at the talented John Kinch. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Good morning. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And this is Around Kansas. Whew. We're in the fall already, and that means it's a fun time. Well, it's always a fun time in Kansas, but especially now with all the festivals going on, like we just had Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend was huge all over the state of Kansas. <laughs> yeah. Just couldn't make it around to everything that was going on. Yeah. Needed, needed a plane, didn't you, to just get from place to place and oh, yeah, get yeah. everywhere. The Esker Rodeo and barbecues and Big course, events in Abilene. We have all just, kinds of lakes and reservoirs. People are out. Oh, uh, yeah. Big time. Big yeah. time. Yeah. So lots of stuff going on. And, of course, people schedule very heavily for um, September and October because those are the rare cool days yeah. where you can count on it not being too hot. And I've got a big event coming up in Kansas City, the Order of the Indian Wars. Um, I did a segment on that um, on our trip to Las Cruces a couple of years ago. But the Order of the Indian Wars, I want to give them a big plug because it's a lot of scholars and just nerds that love studying the Plains Indian Wars. And they have a symposium in Denver every spring. And then in the fall, they take a trip somewhere. So this is a fantastic opportunity. And this fall, this September... The trip is actually in the Kansas City metro area and studying the Indian Wars, um, which is primarily going to be French and Indian, um, Indian War time, um, stuff on the border war. So there's going to be some uh, visiting some great sites, a lot of cool speakers and a good time. They're just such a fun bunch of people. Do you know what Kansas City's original name was? I do. Something. Possum Trot. No, yes, that's it was. not. No. Yes, it was. No. Yeah, Kansas no. City was originally Possum Trot. What's your source on that? I want to see that. <laughs> no, I was thinking of uh, um, something landing. Oh, well, heck, no. what it, was it? It was Possum Trot. <laughs> now, what part of Where's Kansas City phone? was Possum Trot? Yeah, Google. Google that. Google that. I want to see that. Yes. Who told you that, Frank? I learned it a lot. Back when you were in grade school, maybe it was Possum Trot, but after... <laughs> and then somebody said, you know, we ought to name this Kansas City. <clears throat> anyway, Possum Trot. Yes, it was. I, I, hey, I got the historian. I, <laughs> but, well, we're on break, people. I, I hope you're soon on Possum Trot. I hope you're Googling that because I'm going to check when we go on break <laughs> to see if that's right or not. No, I was thinking of Westport, Westport Landing. That's what I was thinking of, Westport well, Landing. Westport, but, you know. But what, next Port door Kansas to Possum Trot? Or? The bluffs there, it was called Possum Trot. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Where'd you get your history degree, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> well, because <laughs> it's The weird. back of a magazine there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery, where we feature my renowned artwork, frontier military, and Native American artifacts. Behind me, you see one of the paintings that are featured in the gallery. In the gallery, we not only try to feature the historical aspect, but also the artwork and the artifacts that go into the painting. Captured in the painting is some beautiful storm clouds, and the idea came from Homer Wheeler himself. He wrote in Buffalo Trails years later, that a giant storm came up 
and the wind and hail obliterated the trail of his scattered cattle. So how I created the painting was I used the artifacts that you see here in the gallery and incorporated it to the chaps on his person and also the rope and the saddle and the tack on the horse to create the lifelike aspect of Lost Trail. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Children, this is why amateurs should not study history, you know, or, or, or speak to historical points because they take one little thing, you know, just one little thing, and then they go crazy with it. Yeah, possum trot. And, of course, I'm sure the guy that suggested the name Possum Trot really appreciates you, Frank, but <laughs> they probably had him tarred and feathered or executed or something. Well, you know, it does not really mean a good place to dig potatoes either, so look at that. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all the history that's not, right here with Frank. <laughs> all right, I'm looking down to their schedule to see what we're supposed to be talking about here instead of Possum Trot, and we're supposed to be talking about the Ray Organ Museum. Did uh -huh. you know we have one of the largest organ collections in the country really? in western Kansas? That's right, in Sharon Springs. And so Mr. Ray has been collecting these organs for years and years and years, and he restores them. And some of these date back... Um, some of them are close to 200 years old. It's just an amazing collection. Dozens of organs, of pump organs, and I think maybe even one pipe organ. So Mr. Ray has decided he's had his fun with the, these um, musical instruments long enough and something else needs to be done with them. So the Fort Wallace Museum will be putting up a building to house that organ collection, and it'll be moving to Wallace. So it'll all be kept intact. It's the largest collection in several states that we know of. I can't imagine who's got a bigger one, you know. It's, but it's a, just an incredible labor of love for Mr. Ray that he's kept this going all these years. Have many of them been restored? I mean, all of them. Really? All, they're all playable. Would it be very cool once they get that museum set up that they have an organ concert. Wouldn't it? Oh, Wouldn't geez. it? Yeah, that'd be way cool. That'd be way cool. And we'll have everybody come out. We'll have all y'all come out and see it. <laughs> one of the organs that I have purchased, restored it completely, it's all playable. It's a Cornish pump organ, it's a 1879, and I purchased it from Dave Simpson at Arlington, Texas. This is a Columbia Organ Company, the year is 1898. I purchased this from David Vaughn, Moore, Oklahoma. It has been all restored and I donated to our hometown bank and it'll always be here as far as I know. This is a Glue Branson organ. The year is 1906. I purchased it from Herbert Davis at Tribune, Kansas. And I asked him about why it was this small and he said he didn't know but he had been told that it was child's organ. This is what I use when I get through with working on the organs, get them all playing. I use this Farmerly's tongue oil. It is a great finish. And if, <clears throat> if one of them, if the varnish is just a little bit light on them, I take stain and mix with this oil hmm. to get 
the texture that originally it is, and then I swab it over the whole organ, and it's a real good protective on the finish of it. Mm -hmm. And it now this organ here, this command, I have not done anything to it, so it will get uh, tubed up a little later on. Mm -hmm. And then you'll put have black special black paint that you put over there. Yeah, just... it's got uh, just a little bit of touching in here where mm -hmm. the paint is gone. I will take some black paint and get it textured to where it matches the other, and get that all fixed up so the backboard is all looking good. Dick Ray's love for these organs is evident, and to ensure the collection will stay together, he and his family have donated the 55-plus organs to the Fort Wallace Memorial Association. A new addition to the museum is being constructed to house this amazing exhibit. I was in an accident where I fell off a roof. I don't know why I started to research stem cells, but I did. And I visited with the doctors. They were excellent. I had my neck done, my shoulders done, section of my back, my hips, my sacrum, my sciatica, and my tailbone. Now I am having better range of motion in my arms and my neck and my back. It was a long road to get there, but I'm so glad that I found them. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas Farmers. And here we are again. I'm Frank. I'm still Deb. <laughs> and this is still around Kansas. There are actually Not canceled yet. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Hey, you know, uh, Kansas also has a reputation for being a wild and woolly state back in the old cowboy days. Yes. And I mean, it really, it was deserving of its reputation. It was. Because there were a lot of uh, cow towns once the Chisholm mm -hmm. Trail got up here, and uh, uh, there were a couple other trails that, that came up. Uh, by the time they got to Kansas and to the railheads, the cowboys were ready to just whoop it up and party. And that's all true. And some of these towns were just really something else. And most people have heard of Dodge City, you know, where Matt Dillon was, not really. But uh, there was Dodge City and there was Abilene. Newton, Kansas was also uh, one of the railheads in a, mm -hmm. and a wild and woolly town. But I discovered another one, Coldwell, Kansas. I think I had an ancestor who was sheriff there. Well, huh. You're going to hear in the story that I'm going to do that sheriffs and marshals didn't last very long no, they did in not. Caldwell, Kansas. No, they did not. Yeah. And anyway, uh, the people of Caldwell have done something very, very interesting with their town. And I don't want to get ahead of the story, but you can go to Caldwell and you will hear talking tombstones. I love it. Yeah. So anyway, let's take a look. This is a Kansas profile by Ron Wilson, director of the Huck Boyd National Institute for Rural Development at Kansas State University. If only those tombstones could talk. Have you ever had that thought while visiting a cemetery? Well, today we'll meet a rural community which is giving a voice to fascinating histories of the past. Karen Sturm is tourism coordinator for the Chamber of Commerce in Caldwell. This is a volunteer position, as was her time spent as president of the local historical society. Caldwell is located near the Oklahoma border. It played a significant role in the 1893 Cherokee Strip land rush into Indian Territory, now Oklahoma. In 1990, the community of Caldwell began a three-year process to prepare for the centennial of the land rush. Karen stepped in to help with this celebration and learned much more about the fascinating history of Caldwell. Caldwell has been nicknamed the Border Queen, positioned as it was along the Oklahoma line. It was a wild, wide-open cow town in the days of the cattle drives along the Chisholm Trail. Being a lawman in Caldwell was nearly impossible. For example, between 1879 and 1885, 
the town went through 16 marshals. Violence was rampant. Outlaws were buried in Caldwell's Boot Hill, and a cemetery was begun northwest of town. As volunteers prepared for the Land Rice Centennial in 1993, they wanted to find an engaging way to share the fascinating true stories of people from Caldwell's past. They thought about a cemetery tour, then thought of having people in period costumes who would tell the stories in person while depicting the deceased. The activity was so popular, it has continued ever since. Talking Tombstones is the name of this program, consisting of volunteers in costume sharing their stories at the cemetery. For example, a cowboy with a rifle stood next to his gravestone and told of being killed in a cow camp shootout. Other volunteers might depict a successful lady of the evening, an early day lawman who was shot in the line of duty, the common law wife of a man who was hung at the stockyards, or a pioneer undertaker. Karen herself portrays the widow of Caldwell's first marshal. This has become our most requested activity, Karen said. It's performed for bus tours, school groups, and more. That's a creative idea for a rural community like Caldwell, population 1,264 people. More than 20 historical markers marked the downtown streets, describing historic buildings and true stories of wild shootouts and more. These signs are entirely funded by private donations and local businesses. In 1995, the town erected giant steel silhouettes south of town, depicting a lawn horn cattle drive of yesteryear. In 2002, the town's old opera house was going to be condemned and razed. The Historical Society bought the building for the back taxes, Karen said. In four years, the opera house was beautifully restored. It hosts various community events. Near the opera house, a beautiful metal arch on two massive limestone pillars were built in 2011. All these activities are conducted by volunteers. Our local businesses have been very supportive of letting people take time to do these things, Karen said. So, anyway, Talking Tombstones, Caldwell, Kansas, sounds like an interesting place around Kansas. Fort Wallace stood on the frontier in the midst of the Plains Indians Wars on a major stage route and rail line. Beside the 1865 Stagecoach Station, a modern museum with thousands of artifacts tell that story, like the fossil of a 40-foot plesiosaur is suspended from the ceiling. Located on Highway 40, midway between Hayes and Colorado Springs, the Fort Wallace Museum is as welcome a site today as the fort itself in the 1860s. Discover the fightingest fort in the West. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at ksgrainsorghum.org. It's called by many names, silver wormwood, white sagebrush, wild sage, prairie sage, wormwood, white mugwort, western mugwort, Louisiana sage, dark leaf mugwort, Garfield tea, lobed cudweed, man sage, and it is abundant throughout the Kansas prairies. Burning white sage and smudge sticks was, and is, used for cleansing and purification for many plains tribes. White sage, or man sage, was perhaps the most important ceremonial plant of the Cheyenne. The sage was spread along the borders and on the altar in almost every ceremonial lodge. The leaves were burned as an incense to cleanse and drive away bad spirits, evil influences, bad dreams, bad thoughts, and sicknesses. The smoke was used to purify people, spaces, implements, utensils, horses, and rifles in various ceremonies. They used the crushed leaves as snuff for a sinus attack, nosebleed, or headaches. 
The Cheyenne also use the white sage in their sun dance and standing against thunder ceremonies. The Lakota make bracelets for the sun dance from white sage. Other tribes that use white sage include the Arapaho, Comanche, Creek, Navajo, and Ute. The Dakota and the other tribes use white sage tea for stomach troubles and many other ailments. They use it as a strong tea for eczema and a deodorant and antiperspirant for underarms and feet. The Kiowa make a bitter drink from white sage, which they use to relieve a variety of lung and stomach complaints. Usually they chew the stem and leaves and swallow the juice. The Kiowa Apaches use thin, sharp, pointed section of the stem as a moax to relieve headaches or pain. The Food and Drug Administration, however, classifies Artemisia as an unsafe herb containing a volatile oil which is an active narcotic poison. Well, all things in moderation, we guess. In the meantime, stage is pretty important to lots of wildlife, including grouse. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Interesting, very interesting story. The things you learn here. We're here for you people. Uh, Yeah, I mean... Who knew? Who knew? (laughs) So, everything. But right now we got a really cool musician to tell you about, and that's John Kinch from right here in Topeka. And while we speak, John is on tour with Garth Brooks. Yes, the Garth Brooks. They have been together for a very long time. And John is an amazing guitarist. And one day, Frank, we're going to do a story on all the guitar players from Kansas. Because, man, have we got the list. It's almost like every great guitar player in the world came from Kansas. I think per capita... We've got the best guitar player, seriously. He's just one of the best in the world. And so now we have John Kinch. The gates of Central Park in New York City swung open, and John Kinch watched as waves of people came through, thousands, hundreds of thousands, until maybe a million people came through. And there he was on stage in front of a million people a long way from Kansas. I'll be the first to admit my life gets a bit surreal at times, John said. John first met Garth Brooks in the summer of 1990 when he was hired to mix sound for Garth's performance at the Wyandotte County Fair. He has officially been working for the Megastar since the fall of 1991, first behind the scenes, then on stage. He recalled the Central Park gig 20 years ago as the zenith of craziness. Every advertising surface in Times Square was about him. Traffic signs and train schedules were adjusted because of the show. It was truly the biggest show to hit Central Park. Garth, we might note, is the biggest selling solo artist in U.S. history. But behind that solo artist is some solid support. John, a Topeka High grad, is one of nine members of Garth's band. There are 21 folks in the crew. John has been called one of the baddest bass players on the planet. Recently, John reflected on the performances at the Los Angeles Forum and a nearby fair. It reminded me that it's all about the music and the fans. It doesn't matter if it's in a famous concert hall or a dirt field. If you play music from your heart, it will connect with people. Period. End of sentence. And that's something my boss is pretty damn good at, if I do say so myself. And so with John. 
If I do say so myself. Well, we're all done again, so I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we Let grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.